So we're into March now and the sun has really got some heat to it. The hedges have already started to burst and we've got some flowers showing through, we've got some celandines poking their heads through. And it's that magical time of the year when the sap starts to flow in the trees. So some of the first trees that are noticeable that the sap's running in are the silver birch. So these silver birch we planted, myself and Lois, how many years ago Lois? Um, ten, ten, ten years ago. So we put a lot of these trees in the ground and this magnificent birch has probably got a good nine or ten inches at the base now. Um, and it's, it's that amazing time where we can actually start to harvest either the timber for different uses, but in this instance we're actually going to harvest some of the sap. So first thing we want to do is actually see if the sap is flowing in that tree. So the easiest way to do that is to actually use your knife. So we come down here, you want to probably go about two feet up, up the stem of the tree, so not right near the base. And then I'm going to just use the tip of my knife I'm going to place it at a slight angle and then I'm going to carefully drive it in just by hitting the back edge of the knife like that, the bud. And then if all is well, then as we withdraw our knife we will start to see some of the sap starting to flow. And you can already see that there's a good deal of sap already running out of that tree. Now I tend to do that first of all with a knife because I want to just check that the sap's flowing before I do anything more major to it. Now obviously we planted these trees and they're on our property so we can do what we like with them. I'm not saying that you should go out into a public space and start stabbing or drilling birch trees just to gather the sap. Obviously find out who owns them and get permission and what we're going to do is not going to damage the tree long term. But now that I've assessed that we've got that sap flowing, we can get some other tools out and because we're going to gather quite a lot of sap, rather than just sticking a stick in there and a, a little billy can underneath it, we're going to use a drill to make a slightly larger hole. So we've brought a brace with us, a little auger and then we've also got a little bit of pipe with us. Now the auger itself, I try and choose the smallest drill bit that we can in order to get the sap from the tree but do as little damage as possible. So the pipe that I've got here is 10 mil in diameter. So we've brought a 10 mil auger with us and I keep the end protected by just keeping it in a little cork. So do you want to pop that in the brace for us Lois? Yeah, sure. Right, I'm going to put the drill in just where Ben's made the little slip. You can already see it's already flowing nicely there. And this just leaves less damage if we do it in the same place. And then it's very easy. And how far should we go in then? That'll probably do you. Probably you only do just to... enough to get the pipe in. Yeah. And come you out. just need to break into that, basically into that cambium layer. Cool. So there's the hole. And then what we'll do is we'll get the pipe and make sure that the air is fairly, ends fairly clean and you've got a nice clean cut and you can already start to see it welling up in the back yeah. of that hole. Up. So we'll squeeze that in and it's good that it's a really tight fit because you don't want to lose any of that sap on the outside running down the tree and look you can see it running already. Mm. So I tend to leave this long until I know roughly where we've drilled the hole and then we want to cut it off We'll cut it off about there. So again, cut it off with a nice clean cut. And we should get a few more trees tapped with, and use this extra bit of pipe then. So. Right, get the bottle. Pop that in. Now the few times that I've done it, you, you prop it up like that and then something walks past, a rabbit or whatever, and knocks it over. So to make that stable, the easiest way to do it is to actually just peg it in place with a couple of sticks. So I've got some sticks, and we'll see if they'll stick into this nice soft ground, hopefully not hit too many roots. There you go. That's a good idea. It's so disappointing when you come back and your bottle's fallen over, it's, it's good just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. Those pesky wabbits knocking it over. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to leave that now for about, well, between six hours and 24 hours. It depends how quickly that sap's flowing. Um, what we've found is ones on the edge of a woodland will give out earlier than the ones in the middle of a woodland. They're getting more sunlight and a bit more heat. So um, this is dripping nicely. Uh, so should we go and 
check out the tree we did earlier? Yeah, let's see how that's doing. Brilliant. Look how much is in there. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. So this has been going for about five hours or so. Um, as you can see, it's, it's nearly full. So this has been a really good tree. Um, we'll let that fill up a little bit more while we show you another little method of uh, getting some uh, birch sap from a tree, a simpler method. So this is another birch that we've actually drilled and we've got running into a bottle down below. We've shown you that you can obviously do the drilling method to gather a lot of sap, or if you're only doing a little bit, you can just stick your knife in and put a little stick and that can run into your billy can. Obviously they're all quite sort of invasive to the actual tree itself. So one of the nicest and sort of most sympathetic ways of doing it is to actually use a branch itself. So what I'll do is I'll bend this down and what you can do, obviously the sap's going to be flowing along the whole tree, but by bending this twig down, this branch, we can actually get the sap that's flowing up the stem to then drip down into a container. So what you might have to do is just put a piece of string to tie it back to create that arc. And all I'll do is I'll snip one of these ends off and we can tie tie a bottle onto it then. So have you got have you got a bit of string to hand there, guys? you could feel the whole tree moving then in the wind. Beautiful. That's going to work great. And then what we'll do, we'll take off this little dead one, and then I'm probably going to take this, this major stem off. This branch is probably going to get trimmed off anyway because it's near the path. So if I cut that end off, it might be a little bit slower because obviously it's a bit further up the, up the tree itself. But after a few minutes you'll probably find that that will start to go moist and it will start running out the same. So then what we can do, is we can get that billy can out for us Lois. Yep, yeah, there we go. So we'll pop that in there, turn it round this branch. Thanks Lois. So it's a little bit slower, because obviously this is further up the trunk, but it seems like it's got a little bit of moisture on there now so we'll come back and see what that's doing in a few hours well, that's going to work well okay so we'll leave that for a bit should we go and try some of the sack yeah great let's drink So there's different levels of sweetness depending on what, how old the tree is, what the soil the, the tree's living in. Um, so some of it might just taste like water and some will taste real sweet. Um, what you've got to imagine is that those roots of the tree are drawing up essential minerals out of the ground and they're going to be in that, that drink. Uh, so it's sort of like a real spring tonic and there's just something fantastic about it. So yeah, as Lois says, it's something fantastic about drinking this sap. We've got through the dark nights of winter and it's like you're drinking spring itself. The great thing about drinking sap from a tree like this, you know that basically you're drinking something that's been purified. So you haven't got to worry about drinking any kind of contaminated water and things like that. So it's perfectly safe to drink. The other thing that you can do with it is obviously you can then take that sap and you can make wine from it if you ferment it. You can uh, make syrup if you boil lots of it down. Um, we just like to sort of drink it out in the woods, don't we? Really yeah, nice. Perfect. Um, but yeah, it's a real nice spring tonic. So if you've drilled a hole in the tree to gather your sap and you're finished with it, remember that we want to seal that hole. So remove your pipe and then go and cut a fresh living piece of timber don't use a dead piece of timber off the floor because that's already going to have fungus and things in it and then we just want to whittle that to fit try and keep sort of facets to it 
so that it will bite into the tree itself and, and stay wedged in there. Try that for fit, chamfer that in just a little bit and then I'm going to hammer that in and then saw that off. Let's try that. Just like so. Get my saw. Cut that off a little bit. And that should stop the sap flowing and then in a few weeks time I can cut that flush and the tree will pretty much heal over that then. So I hope you've enjoyed that as much as we have and hopefully it's given you enough information to get out into the woods and maybe try some birch sap if you've never tried it before. So thanks for watching and what's ale? What's ale? <laughs>